Welcome to the Phone Arena video review of the LG Optimus S. The Optimus S is an entry-level Android handset, but it's the second handset behind the Evo to feature 2.2 in Sprint's lineup. Despite the entry-level price tag, the Optimus comes in at just $50. It is a quite stellar phone. It starts with the design. It's a very good size and feels really good in the hand. It's coated with soft touch paint and everything feels very, very solid. Compared to something like the Sanyo Zio, which is $50 more and only features Android 2.1, the Optimus feels much, much more premium. The screen is super responsive. We had no issues typing on it, surfing the web, or any other basic features. It does run Sprint ID, which means the user can download customizable ID packs. Beyond that, you can just use stock Android 2.2, which is something we really like with these Sprint ID devices. There's no carrier customization besides the Sprint ID and then the Sprint Zone, which gives the users updates and other things like that. Beyond that, it's a bone stock experience and it's something that we think the enthusiasts will appreciate. The Optimus features four hardware buttons, Home, Menu, Back, and Search, which by now are the standard Android buttons. They're laid out in the manner of HTC phones, so those coming from something like the Hero, or excuse us, the Aris, or the Evo would feel very at home, whereas someone coming from a Samsung device would feel a little bit backwards with the home and menu. It's nice to see actual physical keys from time to time. These are very nice. They have a lot of click and travel to them. The same can be said about the volume rocker keys on the right side. There's also a voice dial key and a camera key. On the left hand side is simply the micro SD. On the bottom of the phone here we have the micro USB port. At the top there's a power button and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. And on the back of the phone we find the 3.2 megapixel camera and the phone's single speaker. The camera took okay pictures, but the shutter had some lag to it. It was about two seconds for the autofocus to do its thing, and pictures turned out only so-so. For an entry-level handset, it's not too bad, but given how much we like the rest of the device, it would have been nice to see a better camera. As we said, everything is very quick and responsive with the Optimus S. Android 2.2 really makes a difference here, and LG has done a good job overall. There's about 150 user available megs of data. However, we installed over 100 megs of applications and the device was still moving quite quickly. We had no issues with lag, games for the most part played smoothly, and web browsing was pleasant. This device does have multi-touch, something that the Sanyo Zio was lacking. Call quality was pretty good on this. It wasn't top of the line, but users were pretty impressed with the way we sounded. We had a few issues with a little bit of a tinniness or a tinging, almost like the speaker was blown, but this was not always present, only in harsher tones, like the actual ringing. Battery life for an Android device is pretty good. We can get through a couple days of use on this, which is much more than we can say for something like the Evo, Epic, Transform, or even the Zio. All in all, we're very impressed with the Optimus. The call quality could be a little bit better, but on the whole, we really like it. Our only two gripes are call quality and the camera, but for those looking for a budget Android phone that doesn't disappoint in performance, the Optimus is a great option.